Welcome back to the Cave of Wonders, Dreamwalkers. I am your Sith Lord Callus for Lord Callus TV. And this is another Callus comic review. So if you're new here to the channel, I need you to subscribe, hit that like button, and join the Dreamwalkers in the Army of the Sith on our journey of conquest in this YouTube galaxy. Today we're going to recap and review The Destiny Path Part 6, written by Charles Soule. Jesus Saiz is the artist with Arif Prianto joining him as the colorist. RB Silva and Guru FX are the cover artists. Now, let's jump into the story. The Destiny Path begins on Sorelia with Luke Skywalker drowning in Verla's trap. She has no love for Luke now that she knows he is the son of Darth Vader who was responsible for the purge of the Jedi. She callously watches as Luke struggles in the water, fighting for his life, but Verla has forgotten about R2-D2 as so many often do, underestimating the brilliance and devotion of this little astromech droid. He stuns the former Jedi and deactivates the trap, draining the water and freeing Luke from his watery grave. R2 gives young Skywalker a shock to help resuscitate him and to jumpstart his heart and lungs. Luke coughs up the water and a bit of time passes before we see Verla also regaining consciousness. Luke has bound her hands and moved them to a campsite on the beach. After assuring the crazy woman that he is not going to kill her, Luke frees her from her binds, pleading with her to tell him anything she can about his father and the former Jedi Order. Reluctantly, she agrees and begins to tell him her experience as she suffered through Order 66, her quest to become a Jedi, and ultimately her decision to leave it all behind. Verla is passionate and you can feel her pain and anger as she talks to Luke about the Force, calling it a trap and wanting nothing more to do with it. Luke is empathetic, but he is also determined to become a Jedi. After explaining to Verla how he lost his father's lightsaber, he asks if she knows where he might find another. Verla agrees to tell him under one condition, that he never bother her again. Luke accepts the bargain and Verla tells him of a Jedi outpost that has been around since the days of the High Republic on the planet Tempus. Luke makes his way to the Outer Rim with R2 and they find the outpost still in fairly good condition. Using the force, Luke unlocks the door and they find a treasure trove of Jedi artifacts locked away inside. We see a holocron, a suit of armor, and on one pedestal is a lightsaber with the same design as the Temple Guards. Just as Luke retrieves the hilt, the fiery ghost of the Grand Inquisitor appears to challenge Luke. He is guarding the artifacts, even in death, and the two engage in battle. Elsewhere, Lord Vader is briefed on the progress of the war with the Rebels by Commander Zara. Through the Force, he senses trouble brewing on Tempest and immediately sets a course for the Jedi outpost. Luke is locked in a battle for his life with the Grand Inquisitor and the former Temple Guard that nearly destroys all of the artifacts in the outpost. Luke vanquishes his foe and leaves Tempest with the Guard's lightsaber. When Vader arrives, Luke is gone, but the Grand Inquisitor is still there, a blaze of failure. The Darksiders have a brief conversation where we finally hear the Inquisitor admit to Luke's strength in this series. They've long been saying that he was weak in painting this picture that seemed to dumb down Luke's power. It was good to hear them finally admit to it now. We learn that the Inquisitor is seemingly trapped between worlds and serving the will of the Dark Side. He begs Vader to release him, but Vader refuses and leaves. Then we return 
to the Rebel Fleet, the 4th Division, where Luke is finally reunited with his sister Leia. He presents her with his borrowed lightsaber, and in a single act of inspiration, he ignites the Golden Blade as the 4th Division falls in behind him. And that's where this story ends. This was one of the better issues in this series with some interesting connections to Rebels and the High Republic. I'm happy to see that they did not make Luke build a second lightsaber with that golden blade as the marketing was alluding to. I think I understand now why they are using this timeline between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi to build out this new canon. They are using this time to introduce elements of the High Republic before the new content comes out. I liked seeing the way that they addressed what the Grand Inquisitor was saying to Kanan before he died. There are some things worse than death. And all things considered, this was definitely the better issue to come from this series. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments. How much more of this story is left to tell? I'm about ready for them to wrap it up. If you're new here to the channel, subscribe and join the Sith Army. We are the Dreamwalkers, a clan of the Sith, bounty hunters, and agents alike. Don't forget to check out my Lore or Legend series, where I... What? My Lore or Legend series? Or Lore and Legend series, where I dive into Star Wars stories from the past. Listen, I do what I love. I hope you love what I do. This has been a Callus Comic Review. Until next time.